surf circumferential stress theory. It's actually no no different really than uh, drilling induced tensile breakouts in a in a vertical well. I mean, you're going to experience the most tension. You're going to experience the tensile induced breakouts where you have the maximum hoop tensile hoop stress, right? And so, uh, in polar coordinates, the stress around a crack. So here we're talking about a, a, uh, well let me let me write the equation and <coughs> so I don't so we're talking about at, at the tip of a crack a coordinate system that looks like this as R and theta. Right? For mixed mode fracture, your stress field will look like this. So when we talk about circumferential stress, we're talking about this stress. In a little element in polar coordinates. <coughs> and you know, remember I said the, the stress intensity factor last time sort of contains all the information about the stresses at the crack tip or the degree of singularity at the crack tip. <coughs> um, in, in polar coordinates for a crack in an infinite body, uh, then if we multiply both, both sides of the equation by two pi, square root of 2 pi r, so that we get square root of 2 pi r here, uh, turns out this thing is also K1C. At, I'm sorry, at a critical value. So whatever, you know, whatever the critical value of hoop stress that causes the crack to grow, that, that's equal to K1C at this point. So if we then solve this equation, for the angle theta in terms of everything else, It's not pretty, but you can evaluate it in a computer. Right? So K1C is a material property. We measure it in a lab. Um, this should be K1. K1C is a material property. We measure it in a lab. K1 <laughs> and K2 we get from the displacement discontinuity solution. Right, and if if they're in fact uh, exceeding, you know, if in fact the criteria says the crack will grow, this is the direction it will grow, this angle theta. Right, and it it's pretty easy to sort of have some checks if you look at this, go back to this equation, and look at for pure mode one. So for pure mode one, K two will be zero. There's no stress intensity factor. So if we say for pure mode one, then we have the, the thing reduces to K1 sine theta equal to zero. Therefore, theta equals to zero degrees, which makes sense, right? There's no K2. Pure mode one, the crack's just going to grow straight. <coughs> For pure mode two, 
For pure mode two, what do you think it'll do? So pure mode two would be pure <coughs> shear like that. If I, if I have a sample that's got a crack in it and I grab it on each end and I push on one side and pull on the other, which way is the crack going to go? 45 degrees? It's a good guess. It's if you work it out, so you go back to this equation, plug in K1 equal to zero. Seventy point five degrees, and there's a famous set of experiments called the Kaltoff-Winkler experiment. So, Kaltoff-Winkler, and the way they induced these mode two fractures was they had a basically a plate with two cracks in it, and then they pushed on it here. They actually did these dynamically, didn't they? So impact it there. And the crack grew. 70 degrees. <coughs> so in summary, <coughs> when you use FRAC Pro or one of these displacement discontinuity solution pro uh, pro